An ancient Greek proverb has it that happiness belongs to the self-sufficient. If that is true, then the residents of northeastern Pennsylvania, and maybe even Americans in general, must suffer from a type of chronic mass incompetency. Because according to recent research, Americans are no happier than they were 50 years ago. And, to add insult to injury, the Scranton-Wilkes-Barre metro area, the place where I live, has earned the dubious title as the unhappiest region in the United States. I think the whole negative aspect of it and why we were selected in that big study is it's almost, we're almost self-defeating. But I think there's other factors that we tend to overlook as residents. Um, it's easier to complain about the bad things than to embrace the good things. The people seem to have a drama gene. It's, it's like something, it's something in the genes that they have to have that excitement of some dramatic situations every so often. My name is Kenny Luck, and I'm an author, graduate student, and independent filmmaker who wants to know. Despite living in a country where the pursuit of happiness is etched into its founding documents, how can a person find happiness in the unhappiest place in America? As we're driving through this whole area, um, a lot of the area is very economically depressed and people, um, and it's been this way basically since World War II. And a lot of times, um, you know, when we were talking earlier about that study and people being unhappy, a lot of it has to do with economic depression. And um, unfortunately people, it's very difficult for people to find the right kind of jobs and employment that they can live a sort of satisfactory life. Um, I think one of the issues in this area, and it's been happening for a long time, is that there is a lack of assurity as to where this area is going. Um, businesses come in and they leave just as quickly. Um, and it seems like there's really, I think people feel like there's not a stable plan. So they're not sure, is this a place that's going to be sustaining to myself and my family, my interests, and what I need. The writer H.L. Mencken once said that a happy man is one whose income is $100 a year higher than his wife's sister's husband. Okay, that may not be 100% true, but it does illustrate a larger point about Americans. Well, they say money won't make you happy, but not having money kind of bums people out, generally speaking. Uh, th that's the first thing that pops into my head. Here in Northeast Pennsylvania, the average salary, I bet, is 30 grand. Let's get real. Basically, this region has had a difficult time over the past 20 or 30 years. Uh, historically, the region has been economically depressed ever since coal and textiles and those types of in industries went away in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. It's really not progressed at a pace consistent with other regions. What is known, however, about income and happiness is that once sustenance income is achieved, making people happy is not easy. In other words, tons of money does not equal tons of happiness. But that fact is almost irrelevant in a region where it's hard to find a decent job. This looks all right. Tell me, why are you interested in this job? I need a steady job, Mr. Wiley, with a chance to go places. I see. Well, so much like any other area, economics has to be at the top of that list. It has to play such a huge part in everything. You know, when people can work and, and have jobs and they can pay their bills without the stress of worrying where the next paycheck is coming from, that, that increases the overall happiness of any area. So, you know, we, this area has been known to suffer economically. And, and there's really not a lot going on down here. This is pretty much, uh, I think, what a lot of people think of when they think of a, a typical small Pennsylvania town. You have like small houses and small main streets and so on. So, um, you know, as I drive through this area, it kind of gives you uh, it gives you a sense of, of what it looks like to, to be in the heart of, of northeastern Pennsylvania. So, you may be wondering, what do researchers mean by the word happiness? Well, as it turns out, 
Things like marital status and education affect an individual's overall well-being. Married couples, generally speaking, tend to report higher levels of happiness than their single counterparts, and college graduates also report higher levels of well-being than high school dropouts. Binge drinking, along with unhappiness, remains endemic in northeastern Pennsylvania. The reason for this isn't completely clear, but some speculate that there is a connection between the work hard, play hard attitude among the area's residents and their quasi mass alcoholic behavior. Jeff Walker agrees. We seem to really enjoy alcohol. And while it's great to be 21 and we all have our fun when we're younger, it can't become a lifestyle. Uh, that, that's one thing that, that's a big part of really uh, the entertainment scene in Northeast PA. Uh, you know, we have, we have the highest drunk rating in the country. Little Old Strand is, is higher than New York City, Los Angeles, Miami, Philadelphia. Like, that's, that's just outstanding. In 2014, the same year that the unhappiness research came to light, Scranton, Pennsylvania was ranked the number one most hungover city in America. It turns out that about 21% of its residents admit to binge drinking. Northeastern Pennsylvania isn't only unhappy, but it's also very drunk too. You know, growing up in New England, when we would be hanging out, hey, what do you want to do tonight? You know, we talk different, about different things. Here, people say, hey, what do you want to do tonight? Let's go drinking, okay. Drinking really isn't meant to be a pastime. It's something you do as part of an experience or, or maybe you've had a hard day and you wanna, I'm not against alcohol, don't get me wrong, but people drink heavily here. That doesn't help you get ahead in life. I mean, anything taken beyond a reasonable measure is, is probably gonna be detrimental to you. But as we, as we drive through uh, the region here, um, a lot of times you see uh, local little you know corner bars and this is very, I don't think uh, special to the area. I think this is something that's uh, predominant throughout the country. But here, it's it's sort of more um, emblematic because uh, of this information of having um, such a high level of binge drinking in northeastern Pennsylvania. I think a lot of people who come to me are struggling with happiness because first and foremost they don't accept or they're struggling to accept that sometimes you're not going to be happy. Um, there seems to be this preconceived notion that um, any intrusion of, of anger or sadness or disgust or dissatisfaction just sort of is, is that means you're not a happy person. It's, it's really an individual question and you're responsible for making your own happiness wherever you are and you, you can choose to complain about it if you're not happy or you can choose to take the steps to make yourself happy and invoke change in your life. Now me, I'm over the top ecstatic with my life, man. Yeah, I, you know, because I feel like you control what happens to you. You control your happiness. You determine w what direction your life is gonna go in. Uh, you know, everything ain't perfect, you know, and I'm all right with that. You know, I'm blessed with the ability to be able to try to make things better every day. So, you know, you find your, everybody finds their happiness where they can find it. I find my happiness in being able to have some peace of mind every day to know that, you know, I'm all right. I'm trying to do the next right thing. Instead of focusing on, you know, these, uh, again, structural issues with, with the local economy or, or local legal system or the education system, whatever, all these systems, uh, focusing on individuals and what really you and I could do as individuals to um, contribute, make positive contributions to ourselves and to each other, because even though that sounds a little uh, utopian, like I, I, I can't think of a more noble goal that a, a person can have in trying to increase the net happiness uh, that's around you. Scranton Sucks is a Facebook group run by six anonymous members who poke fun at the area. With an impressive 13,000 followers and counting, the group has gained popularity online, and one of its administrators agreed to a phone interview. Uh, so people don't, people honestly don't like to hear the truth. 
truth. Uh, when there's like major problems in Scranton. What are some of the specific challenges that you think this the city is facing right now? Uh, I mean, for, for instance, I work in Scranton. I don't live in Scranton. None of the admin live in Scranton. So it, it's kind of funny when people say, if you're going to complain about Scranton, why don't you just move? Right. We don't live in Scranton. We live outside of Scranton. Some of us just work there. But I mean, when we have, you know, they keep, for instance, that commuter tax that they wanted to impose on us for, for charging us to work in Scranton, like, they're just coming up with these ridiculous taxes and stuff to make money. And what it's doing is it's, it's honestly just destroying the city from the inside out. So what do you think some things that could be done um, to, to possibly improve our status as the unhappiest city in the United States? I mean, it's got to start from the top and roll downhill. <laughs> I mean, it's got to start with the city council. They got to, they got to realize that you know, taxing people and, and charging people is not the way to do it. I understand that you know you need taxes to run a city, but I mean, not the way Scranton's doing it. We Scranton used to be you know flourishing, like you know years ago, and then everything just started going downhill. One of the most revealing things about the 2014 survey research is that, based on old data from the 1940s. Researchers were able to conclude that places like Scranton and Wilkes-Barre have always seemed to be unhappy. And that begs a very important question. Was it our unhappiness that helped aid in our decline? Where are you going, Susquehanna, Susquehanna? You leaving me through the mountain, you rusty stream from the valley where you found me. With a tough economic landscape, high levels of alcohol abuse, and a historically negative mindset, Northeastern Pennsylvania has some challenges to overcome. When I asked Scranton Sucks if the glass was half empty or half full, they did not mince words. I, I think it's half empty. How come? Just because there's, there's no, there's no happy, people are just miserable in this area. Absolutely miserable. But not everyone shares that sentiment. It's half full. It's definitely half full. Oh, it's half full. It's half full. Open your eyes, take an objective look around, Definitely half full, in my opinion. You know, I understand everybody has their own point of view and the reasons for feeling the way they feel, but I, it's half full here. Actually, it's, it's, it's completely full. It's completely full because it's filled with something. And it's up to you to decide, you know, is what it's filled with, is that, is that good for me? Northeastern Pennsylvania has its challenges, to be sure. It's not always the best place to be. But it's certainly not the worst either. Trying to find happiness here isn't easy, believe me. But being happy in America's unhappiest city is possible. I guess it all just depends on how you see it. Spinning records on the streets Cause that's the way I dream